Hello everyone and welcome to season two of Fistful of Feminism. My name is Monica and today I want to kick off season two by talking about abortion. Oh, so much stigma. Yep, that's right. We're talking about abortion. This subject has indeed been full of stigma my entire life. And I never truly ever learned anything about abortion until I was old enough to actually get out there and do the research myself. First off, what is abortion? Abortion is the deliberate term termination of a pregnancy. It most commonly occurs but is not exclusive to the first 28 weeks of a pregnancy. There are about 44 million abortions performed worldwide each year and unfortunately about half of these are done in an unsafe way. Abortions are commonly performed in the first trimester of pregnancy, a smaller percentage in the second trimester of pregnancy, very rarely in the third trimester of pregnancy. In Canada there are currently no legal restrictions on abortion, though there are some non-legal obstacles that seem to get in the way. Before I knew really anything about abortion, I was like a lot of people. I was sort of on the fence. I didn't really understand what the pro-life movement was, the pro-choice movement. Now that I have information about my own reproductive health care, I think it's very important that we talk about abortions. We don't need any of this extra stigma surrounding it. It's something that's important, that happens a lot, so we need to talk about it. So with all of this in mind, first off, off, we need to talk about the language that we use when talking about abortion. The term pro-life is inaccurate. Pro-life assumes that you are pro-all life. It has been demonstrated time and time again with attacks on abortion clinics, the murders of abortion providers, that pro-life movement is not exactly pro-all life. So for this reason, when I talk about the pro-life movement, I'm actually going to be using the words abortion opponents or the anti-abortion movement. So let's Let's talk about the word life. The Catholic Church's official stance on abortion is that life happens at the moment of conception. This is why sexual education is so important. There is no one moment of conception. A single sperm can take up to 24 hours to actually fertilize an egg. And we're also not talking about babies here. Baby is a human that is born that is completely free from another body. So what we're talking about when we talk about abortion is a zygote blastocyst, embryo, or fetus. Abortion opponents will often use language such as the unborn or small persons. To say that a fertilized egg is indeed a person that requires the same human rights that a baby does is to equate personhood to about 70 to 100 cells and some DNA. I talked about this before in my videos, but a person's DNA does not define the person. Now the term pro-choice actually means what it stands for. Having the constitutional right to do whatever you want with your own body, to not be coerced into any other kind of decision other than the one that you want to make by outside forces, such as the church or the government, whatever that might be. Pro-choice means that you agree that all people should have access to safe abortions and have the choice to decide whether or not an abortion is right for them. An abortion should happen in a legal and safe manner. In other words, only you can consent to what happens to your body and nobody else. Now, who who get abortions? Abortion is not simply a straight, white, middle-class, cis woman's issue. Trans men, non-binary people, gender-fluid people, intersex people, agender people, these are all examples of people who can get abortions as well. All of these people simply turn into places where this zygote, blastocyst, embryo, fetus, where that is going to grow without their consent. Are all of these people any less human because they got pregnant? Are these people supposed to sacrifice their individual rights and freedoms because someone thinks that a fertilized egg has more rights than them. No. But abortion is bad, right? You shouldn't do it. It should be your total last resort. And it's even violence. No. Ending a pregnancy should not be looked at as a negative thing. In fact, in a lot of ways, it's a very positive thing for people to have agency and control of their own bodies and their own destinies. In pro, reclaiming abortion rights by Katha Pollitt, so good. All it explains that we need to talk about ending a pregnancy as a common, even normal event in the reproductive lives of women. And of course I put a star on women because as I talked about before, it doesn't just influence women. Conforming to the idea that all women should be mothers is incredibly sexist. And if someone does not want to be pregnant or follow through with a pregnancy or carry a pregnancy to term, they should be able to say no. We need to get out of this mindset that women who have sex should always be ready for a pregnancy. Women should be able to be sex 
sexually free and do whatever they want with their bodies without the impending consequences of something that could potentially ruin their life. Sex does not always have to equal babies. Yes, every single egg in my body has the potential to be a person. In my lifetime, I will maybe have two of those eggs fertilized. There are literally thousands of eggs that could become children that do not happen. Who is mourning the loss of those lives? Or do they only count as children once a man fertilizes my field? Barren without a man. As you can can see this view is just so heteronormative and makes no sense to the world that we're living in now. Here's a myth. Abortion is used as a method of birth control. Okay. With the countless abortion restrictions introduced in the United States and plenty of MPs here in Canada wanting to put more restrictions on Canada's laws, abortion in the United States has become one of the most expensive and unavailable medical procedures out there. Factor in that most abortion clinics in the United States won't perform abortions after a certain certain time, and some doctors are even told that they cannot give all of the information to their patient if it will help that patient decide abortion. And a lot of doctors are forced to show their patients the ultrasound of the fetus to try and coerce them into not choosing abortion. Since when did doctors have a say in moral implications of what you might do with your body? Now mix all of that together and you basically have the worst form of birth control out there. I've seen in a lot of places and a lot of things on the internet. There's nothing that should constitute violence toward the, again, babies. But we have to account for the fact that coercion and bullying are a form of violence. Seeing protesters outside of an abortion clinic trying to tell people how they should live their lives is a form of violence. The real violence here is not allowing choice. Now, I want to read a little bit. The chapters include reclaiming abortion, what do Americans think about abortion, what is a person, are women people, six myths about abortion. What do abortion opponents really oppose? Hint, it's not just abortion. Can there be a compromise on abortion and reframing motherhood? Opposition to abortion is linked to the shaming of sexually active girls and single women, and I would argue that there are far more intersections of people that are shamed in this. Fears of the white demographic decline. Conservative views of marriage and sexuality, which are not everyone's views. Outright misogyny and anti-feminism. I really like this sentence here. The anti-abortion movement is inescapably entangled with patriarchal religion. This is where most of the funding of the anti-abortion movement comes from. You cannot impose your religious views on someone else. All you can do is make your own choices for your own self, not worry about anyone else's choices. Here's some of the things that I really think abortion opponents are really saying. Women should not be having sex unless they're married and they want to have children. And if they don't listen to this, then they knew the consequences. Your life choices make me uncomfortable, therefore I think you should make mine. Women's bodily autonomy is a myth. A uterus equals a woman. This upholds the gender binary to a T. After all of this, I know there is still a lot to the abortion debate. There's a lot more things that I could talk about. This book is fantastic. I stand with Planned Parenthood and abortion providers. I stand for my own reproductive rights. I stand with my body, my choice, and my life. I know that what I choose to do for me is the right decision. So in short, leave my parts to my smarts. I think on that note, while this sun is coming in, I am going to wrap up this video. Thank you so much everyone for watching. This is officially the start of season two, episode one. I'm very, very excited to be back. I have so much planned for you guys. I have a huge lineup of guests that I'm so excited about and maybe some more surprises on the horizon. Yes, this conversation about abortion can be difficult at times, it can be uncomfortable, but it's something we need to talk about. If you like, you can subscribe and go there and da da da. Make sure to check out the description for all of the things that I might have referenced for this video. I've got a lot of resources for this video. And I guess I'll see you guys next time in two Fridays from now. Not next Friday, but the Friday after that. Bye! Ooh, 